Um, so we're going to start. We're going to ask Mr. Faustino Yang to lead us in a word. And the bed.
Muna Masawanon. I'm here as you to learn about our rights that we know we have and that we, we need to reinforce to continue our struggle as, as an indigenous person. Thank you. I'm Christine Lumen, and um, I just got involved with my husband in Yo Creek. So we're doing a music class with Miss Phil because they want to um, have this. They've got their help to talk team, and they've got their Maya food, and they've got their dance troupe, and then. They had a band a long time ago, and it was a wonderful band in music in the village, but they wanted to bring that back. So she asked my husband and I to help out as musicians, because we're not Mayan, but, and I just, I really am open to helping out to further the Maya culture, to help those children. We were on TV the other, just yesterday, and we had four sessions of practicing on the recorder and singing. And then they spoke their Maya that they learned. It was just like we all had tears in our eyes. It was just wonderful. And so that's where I'm involved at this point. And I'm very happy to be able to be asked to do that, you know, to help out. So thank you. So, Come in the circle. Okay. Yeah, I guess. My name is Juan Vargas from Orijua Town, originally from San Roman Rio Hondo. That's where I was born. San Roman Rio Hondo is 11 miles from Orijua Town. I worked with the military with the people for many years. I retired. And always it's, it's always I'm interested because of my roots. Uh, through a keen interest in the Mayan language, the Mayan culture, as a matter of fact, all my parents and grandparents are the, the Maya, very fluent in the Maya language. And it's a shame that uh, I only know a few words and would want to learn, look in them into the culture, learn the language, look at the culture so they can disseminate that to the, to, the, to the young people so they can also learn and appreciate the culture. So when I saw this ad, I became very interested in it. And I said, maybe that's a start. So I decided to take the time to make a job to see what you have to offer and to learn. And maybe it's a start for me to do my own research and get further information. I appreciate your effort. <laughs> um, I, I got to say. No, no. Oh, my name is Albert Hill, and I am just a friend. Uh, to come out and learn about the indigenous rights and support the group. I'm here Beck Hill and I am here because of my favorite person, Ms. Endeffa, and to also learn about the indigenous rights and to become members of Good morning to everyone. My name is Faustino Yam from the village of Cristo Rey. Um, I am a product of the Catec Maya, fluent in the language. Um, I am a retired teacher served the government for more than 32 years and so many other organizations. And today we are here to have this workshop about the rights of the indigenous people. Sometimes we just stray away from these things. But as a group, as an NGO, Tone Masewalul, we have this privilege today so that as a whole we will learn together of our Maya culture. I'm happy to see all of you that means that we are we have interest in this particular workshop. Thank you very much. You both. I'm gonna take it nowhere. I'm gonna
Yes. 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 I do not hear Maya spoken in my village at all, and I think that would be something that would be fun, especially if the children pick it up and they've got a language that, oh, no, that's not Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. All right, so let me tell you how our program is going to work. Um, first, Mr. Roy is going to talk about the, uh, the rights of the police citizen, all right? And then Mr. Ivan is going to follow up with the rights of the indigenous people. So it, the rights overlap, and it's going to be a very powerful conversation when we see how it all works together. So let's get started, and I'm going to introduce Mr. Roy. No, I will introduce him. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so this is our guest speaker. We're not diminishing you at all. <laughs> we want to keep you on that on that standard. So let's go with Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy is proud to be a husband, father, and grandfather. He has spent his entire life as an educator and political activist in Belize, Central America. He was a professor of community, uh, for Zahra Community College for several years. Although currently retired from teaching, he remains very active in his community. He is currently the only recognized historian and researcher for the Corozal District and is always available to support students and groups in the community with various academic projects. He has lived a life rooted in a passion for the political views due to his great passion for, of wanting only the best for his community. He has the distinction of being the youngest mayor of Corozal County in 23 years. He is very proud of being of Maya ancestry and is currently the Vice President of the Dynamic NGO in Brazil District named Tony Masalolo. Please welcome Mr. Larry Bridget. I want to, I'm going to be very brief. So a lot of the points I'm going to bring, uh, we need more elaboration. But this is not the time for it. And I believe that people will think. Um, I will want first to draw your attention and in the five sense the dead pulse is, is a newsletter of our Corazon Town, Corazon Bay Residence. And uh, interesting, there is an article here that I would like you to read. It comes from the two of us, as uh, myself and uh, Adelita. And uh, very interesting what happened in the with the Graffiti Festival, explaining to you more on art. Second thing, I go directly to be very brief. At this very moment, at this very moment, we, the people of the East, and when I say people, I mean all of us, not only of us, but also are here to make the world to our nature and our people. We have before us an equal opportunity in the middle, a bill of rights to correct discriminatory behavior. A uh, priority set by the government, of the, by our government, the government of Belize, when I feel that our fundamental constitutional rights are daily being violated. So I think you have a point there. Giving priority to something else when basic fundamental rights are being violated. No, I won't go into a detail on that. I think unless you have a question to ask, and maybe some of us um, And at least and with the accusations of you know, corruption, financial mismanagement of our resources, and within these violations are our Maya ancestral rights that have resulted in the almost extinction of the Maya culture and language today. I think it basically saying that because of the problems in our constitution, 
or Maya culture. This time is in modification. So I'm telling you already that our constitution does not have the religious rights. In 1988, mindful of that, a political reform commission was appointed to review our system of governance and to make recommendations for its improvement with a view to achieving greater democracy, more rights to all the communities. In 2000, the Commission submitted their final report and they failed to include indigenous rights. So 1981 is not there, and, and, and year 2000, with that political reform commission, they failed to include indigenous rights. Because they said, that the preamble of the Constitution adequately covers and protects religions of whatever ethnicity. The Commission has blatantly failed to recognize our almost five millennia of continued, complete occupation of this land we know as this. Or even our history, the history of our glorious pre-classic, classic, and post-classic history of great achievements and its practical end with the arrival of the Spanish in 1511 and the British in the 1640s. This is what is our colonial history from 1511 to 1981, when we failed, 2000 we failed, and up to now. That's why it's very important to know that, that our rights have not been recognized. This colonial history of injustices, because that's what happened with all my people, has been denied us because they claim and the government agrees that there were, at the time of British colonization, no Maya, no Maya in this time. <laughs> what a blatant lie when we now know the truth of Maya historical occupation of this land. But all this is Maya land. Anywhere you go, you dig, you find Maya artifacts, and you see the temple standing. Everywhere in all the districts everywhere in the East. Um, and we know also that the first religion is Amaya. The first people by is Amaya. Our government, which replaced the British colonial system, that is in 1981, con continues with all these injustices and wrongs perpetrated by our colonial masters and refuses to redress or correct them. You have seen it, I gave you examples before. In Central America, it's only Belize and El Salvador that do not have indigenous rights in their constitutions. That's important. Think about it because that makes us think in the land. Also, Belize refuses to ratify the ILO Convention, that is the International Labor Organization, on indigenous rights. When other countries have done that in the Caribbean and in Central America, indicating clearly that constitutional recognition of indigenous peoples and their, and their historical rights will not infringe on the rights of other nations. It has been ratified in all countries and no violence, no problems. But who are these indigenous people in Belize? All this is, you may have your own definition, and you'll be good. All the Maya who are the direct descendants of our ancestral Maya are the Maya. Because when the Europeans arrived and they saw those majestic temples, they said, oh, 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 
see the Maya role here, and, and they were upset in that way that they were Mayas, and we, they could not build those gigantic, majestic structures. Very few. So, um, and who else are the Maya? Those who are offsprings of the always unwanted unions with the colonial Spanish or British masters. They raped our women. And what was the result? Bastards with no rights. No rights. That's the history we live. It's bastards. We were all bastards with no rights, but with a strong, but with strong Maya roots that we should know about and accept and not be ashamed to say that. That we were Today, we are the Duke of the Maya in the northern and western parts of the East, northern Greece and western Greece, where are the Duke of the Maya. And in the southern Greece, we have the Kechi and the Mohan. It includes the Garifo Natu. But it's very important for us to know as we look into our rights and fight for them that the Garifuna are indigenous, but not indigenous to the Greeks. They are indigenous to the Caribbean. They came here around 1800. That's very important for us. Undeniable. The exclusion of indigenous Maya rights in our constitution is a because it continues to kill the Maya culture. Look at our education system. Everything remained the same with the British Constitution. We became independent, but we didn't realize that we were not free with our rights. We did not have rights. We continued. We see the British system continue. That's the education system right now that does not allow my or practically allowing it to, but not the way it's supposed to be. My rights to their own language. Denial of our history is a denial of our ancestral rights. We should know that know. And it is a fact that the British displaced and dispossessed our Maya people, appropriating their lands and resources that they use for subsistence, ceremonial, medical, and other purposes. They displaced them. That's what they don't want here. And that's what the, the ones who have inherited the British system, us, we are competing with that. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to know what history. That's why what history. The history of what? Five millennia? It's not taught in our schools. Look at Asad Schumann or all people writing. They give more emphasis from 1630s to 1981 and, and further, but not to the 3,000, 4,000 years of what? The pre classic, classic, to post classic. So that is a challenge for us as we look at our rights. So failure to recognize indigenous rights will certainly continue perpetuating the historical injustices of Spanish and British colonialism. The Maya in Belize had to fight both Spanish and British colonialism. Millions died there were people. So we have been in line of only our right to basic rights, but also just to live our lives for God shot. Our lands. For us, I, I even cry when I think that when the Mayas came back in the so-called caste war of Yucatan, what did they find in Corozal? That they didn't have any land. You know what? They started cultivating on the other side of the river. All the land belonged to the British. 
because anywhere they went to Bagul and Mahagali, they claimed theirs. And they wanted to undiscover as they pushed for Maya. And that's why the problem with, with you know, friends was a matter of scandal. They were fighting. They were resisting this. All right. So my friends, I would have wanted more people to come here, but maybe we should propagate this, we should go and tell other people. That it's not only know thyself, which the Greeks, Greek democracy and so on, rather was, but also what? Know thy history. Know thy rights. Know thy rights. We need the constitutional changes to keep us the right to survive as a Maya people. All of us are Maya We need to learn from them as their historical, as their historical resistance to both Spanish and British rule should keep us a strong story of survival fight and resistance, not to continue sleeping. I want to thank you. There is much more than this. The time is low and I think you know that I want you. I want to thank you very much for the day that you come. You boy. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Roy. As always, Mr. Roy always brings us such great wealth of information. So we really appreciate having Mr. Roy here today. And what Mr. Roy um, started is um, what we will continue is that we have to be aware of the rights uh, so that we can push and as he said so we can fight because this, the bottom line is that we do have entitlement. We are entitled to the rights of basic humans. We are entitled to the rights of the, the indigenous people. Um, the United Nations made this declaration about the rights. So if 143 countries can enjoy those basic indigenous rights, why is it that only two countries can prohibit their, their, their people from having those same rights? So that's what this topic is about and we will continue to find out now more about the rights of indi the indigenous peoples there are two large umbrella of um, declarations that cover the rights of indigenous peoples. The first one is the United Nations declarations, and the second one is the American declarations for indigenous rights. So two huge umbrellas. And today Mr. Ivan is going to talk on, on those topics. So let me tell you a little bit about our... Uh, before you proceed, yes, sir. you mentioned the uh, Equal Opportunities Bill. Yeah. That's the bill that is being discussed right now at the moment. Right? Yes. yes. It's a bill. Yeah. It's a bill right now. Uh, in that bill, there's nothing that has to do with indigenous people. Mm -hmm. and no, it's it's mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it's taking a slant towards issues that have to do with uh, Discrimination. The gender, gender issues, gender issues. It, it looks like it's supposed to look at that issue of discrimination, but there's nothing that has to do with intentional discrimination. See, what I'm arguing is that the basic rights are being ignored to put or give priority to other laws that they are trying to make when they are doing the basic fundamental rights. So, so how can we, is this an opportune time to get something in that bill? What would be the process to... That, that's why we're here. Very good. Yes. Yes, it would be like the next, the next push. What would be in the next push? Because the that's that this, bill is going, this bill is being pushed fast. Right. And you can say that the bill is being slided, yeah. not pushed, <laughs> right? Slided is a better word. So that's why it's great for us to be in this conversation, right? All right, so, young man, Mr. Ivan Shetzal. Lovek Ivan Shetzal Martinez, he is proud to be a gay, Episcopalian, Anglican, indigenous, indigenous Maya, 
a member of the Pueblo Originario de San Francisco, Tialdenco, Mexico City. He was born in Cancun, Quintana Roo, Mexico. He's a graduate student of language and culture at the Universidad Intercultural Maya de Quintana Roo. He's an active participant to the global risk, security, crime, and governance in Latin America. He attended summer seminary in Stanford University in 2019. He is an intercultural advisor and member of the Board of Trustees of Casal Catala de la Peninsula de Yucatan, AC, since 2019. He is currently the congressman who represent the municipality of Jose Maria Morelos in the fourth youth congress of state of Quintana Roo, Mexico for the period of 2019-2020. Let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Ivan Sosa. Good morning. Uh, please uh, take one. Uh, this, uh, this tropical is only a information, general information about discrimination, intercultural, and human rights. Sorry for the language, but it's only Spanish. And this one is uh, it's about a environment, a right human. Uh, both I can speak very fluently the my I, English. I am your full supporter. <laughs> <laughs> but I will try to speak English in well it's just Spanish. right uh, the Spanish. The Maya is in Yucatec Maya culture I found in a, in a blog who who are the growth both are children from Shaibu village. Uh, who has read the, the recent constitution here? I've been quite civil. Yes, very good constitution. Yes. Yeah. Why? Because the mm -hmm. uh, Police Constitution Act in uh, Part 2, Article 6, Subsection 1 says all persons are equal before the law and are entitled without any discrimination to the equal protection of the law. That all are equal uh, to the police and law. Uh, is my, my presentation is a, a, about the comparative between Mexican legislation and Belizean legislation, and finally with the uh, international legislation. Uh, who says the political constitution? Uh, who says the political constitution of the United Mexican States? Mm -hmm. United Mexican States is the official name of Mexico. Article one: uh, Any discrimination based on ethnic or, or national origin, gender, age, disabilities, social status, health conditions, religion, opinion, yeah. sexual orientation, marital status, or any other that violates uh, dignity is prohibited. Mm -hmm. is not valid, nullify, or impair the rights and freedom of people. Uh, and the Article 8, the Article of General Law, the law of linguistic rights of indigenous people says uh, no person may be subject to any type of discrimination because of the language they speak uh, about Mexican nation. Uh, only this Belize constitution says all persons are equal before the law. The law? Uh, Belize constitution uh, in article says, subsection 2.1 says to be informed uh, promptly and in any case no later than 24 hours after such arrest or detention in a language he understands of the reason of, it, of his arrest or detention. Uh, that this is a uh, linguistic rights, the only uh, linguistic rights that I find in the Belgian constitution. Uh, in Mexico, uh, for example, it's, it's similar to, me, to a Mexican linguistic right. Uh, please pay attention. The, the federal authorities responsible for the administration of justice, including agriculture and labor, will provide what is necessary to the indigenous are assist free all times by interpreters and defense and defenders who have no knowledge knowledge. Uh, the indigenous language and culture. Article 10, a general law on linguistic rights of indigenous people. What is a general law on linguistic rights of indigenous people? 
is a, is a Mexican law uh, who uh, was promulgated in 2003. Uh, the law says that all indigenous laws and Spanish and, and Mexican line sign language, American, America, no, Mexican line sign, sign language are national language, not official, national. Why, why is national? Because uh, you can speak uh, 68 uh, indigenous laws, language or we have two uh, sign language. The first one is, is Spanish and the other one is Maya. Exists a Maya sign language in Yucatan uh, or Spanish. Uh, the, the federal administration, municipality, uh, and state are obligated to to attend you in language that you uh, choose. Uh, for example, in Belize, uh, exist the United Nations Re Resolutions and Conventions Enforcement Act. Did you hear about this law? Um, I. Okay, uh, United Nations Resolutions and Conventions Enforcement Act uh, is a short law, only six six points. But uh, the most uh, interesting points here are two: the third and the fourth. The the third says if the security of please, you know, you can phrase it. Because <laughs> my English is not very. If the security. Council of the United Nations, acting under Chapter 7 of the United Nations Chapter, in brackets, being the chapter which relates to the threat to the peace, breaches of the peace, and acts of aggression, closed, passes a resolution calling on states generally or the government of police individually to apply any measures or take any action to give effect to any decision or recommendation of that council. Such resolution shall, within 30 days of the date when the notice thereof is received by the government of Belize, be submitted to the National Assembly and to the National Assembly may pass a law to give effect to it or, where appropriate, the minister may immediately, by order, publish in the Gazette as a statutory instrument make such provision as appears to him necessary or expedient for enabling the said resolution to be effectively implemented and applied within Belize. So that was point three. And then we have uh, three, that was point one of three, and now point two of three. An order made under this section shall have effect notwithstanding anything to the contrary contained in any other rule, regulation, or instrument. Um, okay, what happened? Uh, Belize signed out toward the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People in 2007, but in the Constitution, uh, I didn't find much about the uh, uh, relation about the Indigenous people here in, in Belize. Signed, but there aren't any law, there are nothing. There aren't any regulation about it. And for, for the fourth point of the, of, the, of, of this law says where police ratifies. What is the difference between sign, 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 nature, sign, sign. and ratify? Uh, for example, uh, uh, in the union, in the UN, all all countries sign, 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 sign. But if a country decide uh, in to implement uh, or change their their own laws, they need to ratify it because in the ratif in the ratification, a country must change the like the law. The law it's obligated for for international uh, for international laws and the UN to change the. Because if, if 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 the country they don't say the país no cumple con las regulaciones, is that complete with the regulations? Uh -huh. uh, you can go to uh, international court 
the country? The country. In the International Court of, of Justice. Yes. That's the same ICJ. Yes. Okay. ICG. Yes. yes. ICG. Okay. okay. Where Belize ratifies yes. a United Convention and Convention, such so United Nations Convention shall be submitted to, 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 to the National Assembly within, within 30 days of its combinations, ratification, and, and effect to ear to it or where appropriate the minister may in immediately by order published in the Gazette as a statutory instrument make such, make such provisions as appear to him necessary or expedient for giving effect to such, such compassion within Belize and every such order shall have effect uh, notwithstanding anything to the the contrary contained in any other rule, regulation, or instrument. Every order made under this section shall be submitted to the National Assembly within 30 days of the making, therefore, and shall be subject to negative resolution. Is that what, the, 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 this is the way for, for implementing or change the law here in Greece. When, when Belize ratifies a United uh, National Convention. What is your so, so they sign on and then they must ratify within 30 yes. days? Yes, yes. The first, the first thing is signatory uh -huh. and the other is, is ratified. Yeah. Now, a ratification can be done with, with just an executive declaration, is that they're saying? Um, I'm sorry. Uh, just the, the Prime Minister can, can just declare? I don't know. Yeah, really. Yeah. The beginning simply means that if your law is not congruent, yeah. you, you, you have to change your law to suit that law. Exactly. Oh, so if you, you sign on, sign. then yeah. you must ratify yeah. within 30 yeah. days. Yeah, measures yeah. 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 to be yeah. 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 within yeah. how much time? Yeah. 30 days. 30 days. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one day. month. Yeah. 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 And if they don't, then interested parties have to take the to court. Yeah. 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 If you're a signatory to it, they will defy and you do not follow them, they can take it to court. Because you have agreed to an international convention. In the, oh. in the first, if I may, okay. in the primero, I was saying that Mexico recognizes, I think it's 68, 68, but it doesn't have an official language. And for me, that's very important. Mexico do not have an official language. Mexico recognize other indigenous languages, but in Belize it's opposite. Oh, we, but the only one language is recognized, English. So like the indigenous languages, including Garifuna, Spanish, Maya, do not have any status. What happened with other uh, Latin American countries? For example, other Latin American countries, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, um, for example, Spain, Argentina, uh, Bolivia, Venezuela says uh, our official language is the Castilian, Castilian, Castilian. And other countries, for example, Guatemala, Central America, is, is say our our official language is the Spanish. It's a uh, uh, it's the same language. Uh, what happened in Mexico? Mexico in in first. In Mexico, in our constitution, in Mexican constitution, there there isn't any about an unofficial language. Any any article says uh, Spanish is the official language of of the Mexican of the Mexican Federation. No, there there uh, who who says a uh, national language is the uh, general. Uh, is the general law of indige of right indigenous yes is how do you say is general law of linguistic of linguistic rights of indigenous people says uh, in the in the fourth article the of, of, of that law say 
Todas las lenguas las indígenas. Todas las lenguas indígenas junto al español. Son lenguas nacionales. La misma ley define que es una lengua indígena. Dice que una lengua indígena es aquella que se hablaba antes de la colonización. Y, y tendrá reconocimiento nacional and, and it will have a national recognition and it's all and that's it. so mm -hmm. would that put the owners of the state to define mm -hmm. what's that language that is that of what they need to so, like what mm -hmm. the state would have indigenous people different indigenous people no 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 it's general if for example yeah. we speak maya I can speak Maya in Baja California, in uh -huh. for example, Tijuana. No, no, I'm talking about, but I'm talking about yeah, official, official document. For example, in Yucatan, you can expedite a, 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 a Yucatan Maya document. Mm -hmm. As opposed to representing Sonora, which might be maybe a Yaki, Abajo. Yaki language, Abajo. something like that. Yes. Maybe because they have a different uh, That is part of the rights. In the practice, yeah. uh, it's no. It doesn't work that way. We are no. far to yeah. implementate it. It's right. just this. But if you, but Lao says that you can write, for example, in Yucatec Maya, mm -hmm. and, um, and the full is valid in all Mexico. Uh, what is the problem? Uh, the problem is, uh, we, for example, in, in, my, in my case, I write, and I, saw, and I, 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 I write, in, I, I always write in Maya. For a soul, uh, for for a soul, soul uh -huh. for, for a soul, for a soul, solicitation. Uh, for a solicitation, for a uh, um, complaint. A complaint in in National Council of uh, right, Human Rights, uh, and they are obligated by law to. To translate it by, to, to Maya. It's fun to you in Maya because yes. you, you put your, your complaint in Maya. And this, I, I lived uh, 36 years in the state, so I know how the system works in the state. And being in the healthcare profession, um, I was one of the nurses, the few nurses that could speak Spanish. And so whenever we had a patient, I had to put an interpret for that patient. Yeah. Sometimes we had to rewrite the information in Spanish. and bring it to them inside, then they could That's my point about health care and all of those things, yes. because you need to understand, read, yeah. uh, read all your prescription and so, so on. If you cannot, so that is, to come, that is to come in Mexico, because mm -hmm. just September 29th, the um, the Health Care Department of Mexico is going to be upon itself to translate the entire constitution of Chetobal Quintanero in the Yucatec Maya language. And then he um, would have presented that document back to the president of yeah. Mexico. So it's a small step, which is a big step, we're right? All yeah. we're all and and he's you. also using wow. it as an example that this is the way we're going forward. Mm -hmm. So that's how the, the, that right should be implemented everywhere. Mm -hmm. amongst the Constitution was translated is the, is the, is the, is the Constitution of Quintana Roo. Because in Mexico is a federation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a, 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 a supreme constitution, yeah. and every state yes. has yes. their yeah. own constitution. Yeah. We have 23 <laughs> constitutions. Uno de Yucatán, otro de Guadalajara, otro de. Yes, it is something that is where everything is centralized. It yes. Not even our own yeah. ceremonial center we can use. Yeah. You know, yeah. Everything centralized. Yeah. I yeah. think yeah. then that we have to think about greater autonomy. 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 For the districts. Because that, that's what happens yeah. in Mexico. It's state yeah. legislation, yeah. no? Yeah. The autonomy yeah. of each district. And that is a base value. Yeah. Yeah. So we just have a model of chess. Is there an online translator for for uh, for you could make my yeah, yeah no so you know, I know that the Google Translate came from yeah. United Nations documents and that's how they were able Google Translate took all those free documents and, and made Google Translate. I wonder um, 
in other words, it's the Mario Koi 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 that they are working with. Yeah, but then one question. I'll ask it in Spanish and English. When I was growing up in in San Pablo. Nos pegaban por hablar español en la escuela, aunque no era en una clase de, de, de inglés. We were growing up in my village, for example, San Paolo is a Maya village. Now the people have lost their identity, but it's a, the, the, the thing is that the elders say that they, when they were growing up, they used to punish them for speaking Maya, and when they shifted to Spanish, they were being punished in the school for speaking Spanish, they want an R English, even though it was not an English class, it was mathematics, mm -hmm. it was that, does that violate our right also? Mm -hmm. Surely it does. Because yes. it does. Yes. I, 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 I live that in, to a point that the teacher even told me, no, mm -hmm. no, you are not Maya, Mayas are dead, you guys are, are Hispanics, you, you guys are mestizos. Spanish, and I think that has a huge effect in the mind of the future generation. Because perhaps, I don't know if you guys are new when a Garifuna person spoke to Garifuna to a person in the bank. The, yeah. the, the, the owner or something got angry at them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, for hablar en el idioma de Rifon. So, then I think we have a big problem colonially also. Yeah. 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 Simplemente porque la persona se la sepa y le habló en el idioma de Rifon, que los jefes de la persona no te la regañaron. Right now, right now, the banks are hiring now. Chinese teller, so they can deal with the Chinese people that are making a lot of money. Yes, but they are moved by the interest of making money. Right, that's right. That's right, that's right. That's right, that's right. It's not just about the Maya, but about the Chinese and the Hindu. They want to have them there. Yeah, but you see why? In Mexico, it's not possible, for example, this discrimination, if you forbid, and say other people, you can speak, uh, you know, I don't know, Mazateco or Maya or discrimination. You? Yes. You can, uh, yes, you, uh, people uh, will go to jail, to jail and cancer. If you pro 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 prevail uh, to speak another indigenous language. In, in Corazza, just a few years ago, the Minister of Education was having a uh, a familiarization visit on some sort of thing in one year. He was in Corazal town and for the Corazal district. And there was a representation from San Narciso, a Maria. And he said first, Yo quiero. In Spanish, he said it. You know what the minister says? Here, you're not going to stand and talk in that language. The official language is English. Shut up, the man. And he started to, you know, he was vexed. Yeah, we read, we read but those, are, those things are happening. And many people are afraid to talk right now because of that. Because you're shut up immediately. And that's what he did, the minister, huh? the minister of education. Mr. Ivan, may I share Article 13 on that matter? Yeah? yeah. Okay. Article 13 of the United Nations Declaration says systems of knowledge, language, communication, indigenous law and jurisdiction. One, indigenous people have the right to revitalize, use, develop, and transmit to future generations their histories, languages, oral traditions, philosophies, writing systems, and literature, and to designate and retain their own names for communities, place, and persons. And two says, state shall take effective measure to ensure that this right is protected and also to ensure that indigenous peoples can understand and to be understood in political, legal, legal and administrative proceedings where necessary through the provision of interpretation or by other appropriate means. So it's your right. It's clear, it's clear. And then the United but that, yes, that, that, that is just in, in paper, not in full. Yes, it's in the same way. It's not a problem. Yes, it's true. It's true. But believe that the Belize didn't ratify that. It's just in the same way. No, it's in the same way. It's just in the same way.
the Maya population is diminishing, or is it as is it the way yes. it is? Okay, we, that's we, hold up, hold up. is it the way we, we we define the Mayas who are Mayas, right? Because we have a census coming up in May. That I want yeah, to know. We have another census coming up in May. The census which, which, which is the extent of who, who is who. Okay. Well, let me say this something about the census. We have done a, a lot of research on the censuses uh, having taken place during colonial times up to now. Notice that the you know when people are questioned on this or, or they're asked to give answers, then the government decides the main ethnic groups. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then they yes. only had at yeah. some time in the sixties only Maya and Mestizo. And because of the all derogatory uh, uh, what treatment that was given to the Maya, many of them, not because the Maya declined, they turned Mestiz. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when, like in a village of Shaibe, we know that there are more than, say, 10 Maya families. But it ended up in 10 when there were maybe 100 or all of Shaibe was Maya, but then they started writing Mestizo. Mm -hmm. So that is what I even thought this year, that we should have questioned the authorities, government of the only census, what ethnic terms they're going to use. And I think that when they come, they you should sure take make Maya. sure, for example, if you feel that you are looking at Maya, make sure you put it because many times they only put it, mm -hmm. you know, like, see, see all of you say, all of you say, ah, a mestizo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they don't ask your, yeah. your um, um, and they are the ones who suggest it. Well, they are the ones who dictate you. Yeah. 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 So, so, if somebody asks somebody, are you Maya? I mean, say again what defines Maya. It's, it, what is, what, you said that before. I yes. just wanted to yes, say, we clear in my mind what it means. We have the indigenous Maya defined yes. as all those people who walk your mind. Well, I mean, for beliefs, no, because all of the other areas occupied beliefs before the conquest. All those were my, uh, and though when the British came, they said they were not my, they were, they, they believe that they are lie. It's a lie. Okay. Okay. But those were the first. Not today with the European impact, with the Spanish and the British impact here. No, that has changed where we brought up the case of the Mestizo, where because of, of, of force unions, you know, okay. then right. we have the, the produce of, of the yeah. person who is more Maya blood, or 50-50, but later on becoming more at 80-20, because you, you know the, the Spaniards and the British didn't bring any, the, 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 their, their people with them. So if, if there was further miscegenation, it was between Maya and Maya. So the, the Maya blood increased rather than increased, but yet their numbers decreased, as he was explained, yes, what, what in the census. Uh -huh. What Mr. Roy wants to say in a summary is that yeah. anyone who comes from our lineage does not matter, yeah. or the descent does not matter if they are mixed, they have the right to identify as a Maya, because yeah. they are the a Maya a blood. Our roots are on this land, so. Yeah. Yeah, that is very vital yeah. that yeah. you yeah. get to choose your identification. Yeah. Don't choose what someone is giving to you right. because they're putting on you a label. So you get to say powerfully, I choose to be Yucatec right. Maya right. because my grandfather was from Concepcion and he's a monk. So you yeah. can't come and tell oh, oh, me, Sabella, Spain. that I am Mestizo <laughs> or I am Creole. <laughs> you can say that, but I am yeah. choosing to be Yucatec in Mexico it's different. For example, in, in this year is the is the census twenty twenty. But in the census uh, people say are two indigenous? Yes or not? They don't. Uh, they don't answer. Which, which is your ethnic group? Or no. are you indigenous? Yes. Not. Yes. Uh, they don't question if you speak the language. Not to speak the language. Because in Mexico, uh, the the right uh, <coughs> says that uh, I am indigenous is 
¿Cómo traducir este término autoadscripción? Autodescripción. Yes. Uh, if I say I am indigenous, the the laws and, and Mexican government says ah, you're indigenous. No problem. We agree. It's all. Yeah. Yeah. Are you indigenous? Yes. No. See, this is just what I'm saying because I'm sure yeah. in your presentation you're gonna get it. <laughs> I don't want to get say what I want to say, right? I want you to do your okay. thing. Okay. Because... Finish. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's not, he won't finish. <laughs> international instruments about indigenous rights. The first one is international covenant. 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 Of on economic, social, and cultural rights. Article 1 says all people have the right of self-determination by virtue of that right, they freely determine their political status and freely pursue their economic, social, and cultural development. Article 2 says all people may, for their own ends, freely dispose of their natural wealth and resources without prejudice prejudice to any obligation arising out of international <laughs> economic cooperation based upon the principle of mutual benefits and international law. In no case, may a people be deprived of its of our means, means of... Hello, this is Adela Peterson Vallejo de Mo and we are here in beautiful Carrizal town on February 22nd, 2020. And we have just finished our first workshop for this year, 2020, presented by Tony Masenwalon, NGO in Carrizal, called, we are called um, Somos Mayas, we are Maya. And our workshop today was on the rights of indigenous peoples. And it's a very broad topic. So what we did is we uh, learned about the various declarations that cover the rights of the indi indigenous people, mm -hmm. such as the American Declaration for mm -hmm. Indigenous People and the United Nations Declarations for Indigenous People. So um, there are about 46 um, rights under the United Nations Declarations that um, favor the indigenous people and it's very important that people especially people of Belize um, there are only two indigenous groups in Belize uh, you should know it is the Maya and the Garifuna so these communities should be aware of their rights um, so that they can live powerfully in their communities and prosper as a people within this uh, country of Belize. So the big takeaway for today was that although these um, rights um, were passed, uh, it doesn't, it's not being recognized in, within our country of Belize. So the greatest um, thing that we learned is that we need to be aware of these rights and gently push forward and continue to fight for the rights of the indigenous indigenous people in the country of Belize. Thanks. All right then, thank you so much for sharing. All right.